Hey everybody, Josh from Dutch Enterprises here. Today we're doing another product review. This time we're checking out the Harbor Freight Vulcan multi machine welding cart. This thing's supposed to be able to hold three machines, two bottles, TIG rod, and have plenty of storage space inside. So we're going to take a look at it and see if it's worth the $300 plus dollars that they're asking for it and see whether or not you should buy it and have it in your shop. We just got this today. We just got it assembled. We're going to go over it, take a quick look at it, see what it looks like empty before we get it all loaded up, take a look at what the drawers look like, and uh, kind of go from there. We're going to get it loaded down with two of the machines that we use on a regular basis in the shop, which is going to be our... Hobart Handler MVP210 MIG unit here that we use on a regular basis for doing a lot of our rail work and auto body work. And then we're also going to put our Eastwood TIG Digital 200, which we don't have out here in this shop currently. Uh, that's at my private shop right now. We're going to have to get that moved over here. And we're going to go ahead and load this thing up and see how it can handle the machines, see how it does. So far, it's looking pretty good. Well, we got the Hobart put up on there and uh, some equipment put in it. And I started to notice something, uh, a few things I want to point out before I get the Eastwood up here and kind of cover everything. And that's mainly with the quality of the powder coat finish. So, as you can see, we already got some digs and some scratches in here. And they're not small. They're hefty sizes. Now, granted, I probably should have picked the Hobart up a little bit further instead of sliding it across there. However, I was kind of expecting that powder coat finish to be a little bit more durable than that. You can even see down here, when I put my 80 cubic foot bottle on first, before I moved it over onto that back um, bottle holding section, I just sat it down there for about five minutes while it was chained up and it's already scratched and tore that powder coat up there also. I'm a little upset about that. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more durable of a finish, especially on a welding cart, but it is definitely a huge upgrade from this one which is a base model Harbor Freight cart that's had extensive modifications made to it. It's had square tubing framed all along the shelves on the bottom. Add it, give it a little bit more strength. And then on the back, it's had two pieces of angle iron cut and beveled and turned into uh, bottle supports along with bigger wheels on the back and larger, better casters on the front. And this is a good little cart for a small welder, but uh, the Hobart 210 is just a little bit too big for it. It kind of hangs off a little too much. Um, the door on the side catches on the side of the lip. So I got a smaller Eastwood MiG-135 that I use for sheet metal work and auto body work. I'm going to put that welder on that cart because it's going to be a lot easier to move around a race car, or move around a resto project on that cart than it will be with this big one right here so that's kind of the game plan make the smaller cart my eastwood 135 mig cart and then this large one here is going to have the hobart handler 210 mvp and the eastwood digital tig 200 on it because this one this welder and my tig welder mainly stay in the shop my tig welder comes out every now and then for some mobile work and every now and then uh, for some roll cage work where i'm doing tig and not mig depending upon what the client asks for so it's not that big of a deal if i need to move this out and around um, however that one is going to be a lot easier with that smaller mig welder on it for just sheet metal work and that's the name of the game you know ease you want to be able to move your carts around easily. You want to move your welders around easily. You don't want to be big and bulky and a hassle. You don't want your carts getting in the way, but you also need them sturdy and safe. And that's what we're hoping this one is, sturdy and safe. Okay, so we got both of our welders set up here. We have our Hobart Handler 210 MVP 
made in the U.S. and our Eastwood TIG 200 digital unit up here. Now this cart is capable of holding three welders, hence the big space between the two we have here. However, with the way our welders are set up, I'm probably only going to keep two on here. One, my Hobart opens up on the side here to get to the wire and the drive rollers. So if I put that over here where the Eastwood is, it hits my two gas bottles, which doesn't work out well. And then when I stick it over on here with the machine right next to it, it hits the other machine. So I still can't get to it. So at the moment, um, we're going to keep it just these two, the TIG welder and the MIG welder. It also gives me a place to wrap up my foot pedal and set it. That way I don't have to disconnect it and put it down in the storage cabinet every single time I'm done with it. Because some days I wrap it up, I'm going to use it the next day, I'm going to use it two days from now. So constantly connecting and disconnecting that lead off of the machine, I prefer not to do that. Just excess wear and tear on the pins and on the threads. Overall, I'm relatively surprised and happy with this Vulcan Harbor Freight cart. Build quality on it, for the most part, definitely surpassed my expectations. The material, the metal, uh, for the shelves, for the doors, for the top of it, it's not real thin. It doesn't, you know, bend, it doesn't tin can and pop in and out. They're, it's built heavy duty. Unload it with nothing inside of it, just assembled. It's 160 pounds according to the paperwork. So it's not a thin, you know, shitty cart that we've experienced in the past uh, from some of their products. This is much, much better. What little bit of assembly I had to do to put this together wasn't really that bad. Um, I, you do need one other person to help you assemble it unless you're willing to flip the cart upside down and on its side and on its back and everything like that by yourself. It's just easier to stand it up and you know move it once or twice and have someone help you by holding the bottom tray there when you put the bolts in. Other than that, it's real easy. Everything bolts together simple. Uh, everything's nut serted, so you know the threads are already inside. Uh, you don't have to worry about trying to hold a nut and a washer and a bolt and you know thread things together on the inside and on the outside. All the drawers are already in. The only thing you have to do is put the two shelves on, your bottle racks, your wheels, your handle, and your uh, electrode holders and TIG rod holders which all bolt in very, very easily. Uh, I believe it took maybe 20 minutes, half an hour tops to get the box out of the truck, opened up, figure out what everything was, assemble it, wipe it down, and get it into the shop. So it really was not that big of a deal, which is nice because I'm trying to save time here. We're a welding and fabrication company by all means. I could have built a welding cart We've built several in the past. It's not really that big of a deal. However, it does take time, and that's not something that we were trying to really burn up a lot of right now. Uh, we're kind of on crunch time with a couple different projects going on. Uh, we're in fall. Winter's getting here closer, uh, so we do have outdoor work that needs to get wrapped up and finished up before snow gets here. So right now, name of the game is time. The other big thing that sold me on this car at the store was all that storage area. And let me kind of show you how we put all of that to use. So the top drawer that's got all the separation pieces in it, we use for TIG and MIG parts. We have all of our uh, TIG tips, aluminum tips, nozzles. We have uh, standard TIG supplies. We have our um, gas lenses from MFURIC. We have our standard top style gas lenses, all of our cups, our fuel cups, our adapters, tails and end caps, uh, more gas lens cups, small aluminum nozzles and lava stone nozzles for doing TIG work. 
Just a miscellaneous tool uh, drawer. We haven't really filled it with everything yet, but we basically just want the basic tools for doing any servicing on the regulators, the machines, or basic work. I have a another box over here that's got all of our layout gear and you know measuring equipment and mirrors and specialty things like that. This is just basics. The next one's empty right now. Um, We've been putting our grinders in here right now. Uh, I got them out in tool bags because we're packed up for a job, so we're gonna be taking them out tomorrow. Uh, but that is where we've been keeping our grinders at. And normally these weld leads aren't in the way. Right now uh, I'm set up and just got done doing a uh, TIG job and getting ready to start on another one. Um, so usually these would be wrapped up and tucked out of the way. Down at the bottom, it opens and slides open. We can store helmets. Helmet parts, right now we have our uh, hearing PPE in there. Uh, both of our helmets are out in the bags. You can open up the side cabinet. We start to load it. We have some weld rod down on the bottom. We still have to move the rest out from our other storage cabinet. Uh, up top, we have uh, some of our uh, bottle caps. Moving over onto the door storage, we have alcohol prep pads, pipe wraps different types of anti-splatter sprays and liner cleaners. It's a very good cart. It holds a lot of your welding stuff. So now, instead of having a big cabinet somewhere with all of that welding gear, it's inside of the cart. Wherever our welders go, all of the uh, you know parts and pieces that we need to fix it or to change setup goes. Um, we do have Decent amount of room around the back for TIG rod storage. We're actually going to take some PVC closer to the diameter of these holes and make some sleeves and get rid of these uh, multiple containers here and clean it up a little bit. We have some braze rod over uh, here tucked in by our bottles just because we had more filler rod than what the cart would hold. And right now we have a smaller 80 cubic foot 7525 tank and a larger 120 for the pure argon for the TIG. And overall I'm pretty happy. There's a few things um, that I was a little upset about. One of them that I brought up earlier is the quality of the powder coat. There's a lot of scratching, there's a lot of marking just from getting things set up. Um, you can see right down here some gouges on the powder coat. Uh, earlier I showed you the ones around where the bottles are, which you can't see it obviously when the bottle is on it, and that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm just concerned about how long until it starts to you know corrode or rust or really start to chew anything up on it. It's got a pretty good sturdy handle. It doesn't flex, it doesn't really move. Lead wraps on the side, lead wraps on the back over there. The only other thing that I'm not 100% happy with or that I should say would be nice to see on future models is currently they only put a lock on the larger cabinet door. It would be nice if we saw a secondary lock right up here, just like a toolbox that has the back bar that comes down and locks all the drawers, uh, or as well as one on that bottom one where we keep our helmets. Um, all keyed the same because it comes with two keys, just keep it all keyed the same. Just that way at the end of the day if I want to leave my you know, uh, Miller Digital Elite helmet in here or one of my nice Jackson hoods in there, um, I don't have to worry about it. I have a lot of m -Furic and CK lenses uh, in that top tray. That's not something I really want walking off. Now thankfully, typically I don't have to worry about things like that because uh, I'm the only one here at the shop, but it's still something for other people who are going to be using this in a larger shop environment, maybe that has multiple shifts, it would be a good idea to add. Uh, as far as pricing goes, it's not hateful, it's not outside of the realm of, yeah, I'll spend that much money, uh, at around 340 to 350 I believe it came out to be. However, uh, after seeing the quality of the powder coat and the fact that it's only got one lock on it, I'd be a lot happier if this was closer to the 275 to 300 range. If you could get a coupon or get it on sale at that price, I'd do it all day long. Um, I'd still spend the extra money for this, um, most definitely. 
it's worth it. Uh, I'm just going to complain a little bit more and, you know, be a little more grouchy on the ride home. That's all. Well worth the money, though. I'd give it four out of five stars. Um, I'd definitely say if you're looking for a multi-machine uh, cart and you have the room to spare something of this size, by all means, definitely buy it. Um, it is quality. It's not cheap garbage. Uh, like some of the other carts that we've seen throughout the years from Harbor Freight, uh, this is a much higher quality cart. So that about wraps it up. Per usual, if you like the video, hit subscribe and follow. Check us out on Facebook as well as on Instagram at Dicus Enterprises LLC or Dicus underscore Enterprises for Instagram. And feel free to leave comments. Uh, if you have any uh, personal experience with this cart, we've only had ours for a week now, so we're not too sure durability-wise how it's going to hold up. This is just basic first impressions. Uh, after we've had it for a year or so and we've really started to use and abuse it, we'll do another video, check out how well the powder coatings held up, how well the casters have held up, how well all the slides and the drawers have held up, because that is something I am interested in seeing, how over time and in a shop environment, how well is it going to do. So we'll check on that at a later date and see how it's panning out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.